Hi, Ava. Glad you could join us. I can see you. Don't worry about it. We're, well, when it's time to start the program, we'll take off the main screen and you'll see everyone. Oh. So, uh, Gordon, uh, yes. you would like from us a two-minute comment, right? Right, and I will let you know when we when we uh, are there, which will be pr pretty soon. We're going to have um, you are going to be the third to speak, and I will I will signal you. Okay. So I will be the third tenor. <laughs> there you go. You actually you'll be actually you'll be the fifth person, but the third uh, yes the, the third uh, person. Hi Eva. Hi. Who's saying hi? Raoul. Raoul. Hi Raoul. Hmm. Oh boy. <laughs> Come on, so many zooms. I don't know anymore which is which. Or oh God, it's it's. Confusing. Ava, don't worry. I feel the exact same way. <laughs> I keep texting. Which one should I go into now? <laughs> so you're well, in good I'm, company, I'm, Ava. I'm really Sorry. glad you called me because I was going to run and I would be late and I didn't remember who sent me the link because it's my name. That, oh. Anyway. Don't worry. It's all good. You see, I'm joining you, Ava. I'm going gray. Thank you. Well, you look beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, Gordon, I think we are, there are people coming in right now, but everyone's being let in, so if you want to get started. Okay, so we're going to start with, uh, Zach is going to get us going. Thank you, Aaliyah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be happy, Hoffman Singh.
see the promised land And yet we'll make the journey Walk it hand in hand If not now, if not now Tell me when If not now Tell me when If not now Tell me when We may never see this moment Or place in time again if not now if not now tell me when so we'll work until it's done every daughter every son every soul that's ever longed for something better something Take a change of heart for this to mend. It will take a change of heart for this to mend. But miracles do happen every shining now and then. If not now, if not now, tell me when. If not now. Thank you, Happy. I just want to introduce for everybody this culminating ceremony, this Tekis for Yom HaShoah. And I want to put the ceremony in the context of the covenant. And uh, what I mean by that, I'm not entirely sure, except for I want to hold Yom HaShoah in the loving arms of the Jewish people. And let me say a little bit about a covenantal ceremony. A covenantal ceremony is a partnership between generations, generations who learn from each other's joy and each other's pain, from each other's accomplishments and flaws, gifts and burdens, and the purpose is to refine the soul, to renew the Jewish people, and to repair the broken world in which we live. And the covenant teaches us about where we come from and where we're going. What are the virtues and the values and the practices that we need for the journey? Who are we? And whose are we? In our tradition, individuals and generations do not pass away. Like our foremothers and forefathers, we are gathered unto our people by an active process of building bridges, of remembering and absorbing, of editing and also adapting and trying to both acknowledge and appreciate and also refine the wisdom of our predecessors. So going to struggle, I think as our people has since the Shoah to find a way to remember and enact and feel the claim and feel the responsibility of this day. And so the way we've done that is to focus on 
a dialogue and a bridge between three survivors and three of our seniors. And I'm gonna ask each one to speak. And at the end of each person's speech, we're gonna light a candle. So let me start off and ask Gabriella Karen um, to start us off with some words about what she wants us to carry forward. It does not matter what color of your eyes are or what color of your skin is or color of your hair is. We are all the same people and we don't have to love each other, but we have to respect every person on this earth. We all have the right to be here. No exceptions. Together, we can make a better world one by one, baby steps. And we will change the world together. Thank you for your participation. <laughs> Thank you, Gabriella. Now I'm gonna ask Elon Gordon from Barrick Academy to share some words as well. Thank you. As a grandchild of a Holocaust survivor, I feel it's my responsibility to preserve the stories of the Shoah and honor my family's strong Jewish values. While my Zadie was persecuted for being Jewish, never lost his faith in God, and eventually went on to become a Jewish educator and Hazan after the Shoah. This is why I've made it my life's goal to strive for a better Jewish future through education and Yikun Alam. After vis visiting Auschwitz with my classmates in 2019 and walking my Zay's footsteps, it is even more clear to me that I need to continue my work in Holocaust education as I enter the adult world. Observing people posing for pictures in front of Auschwitz gates without any remorse or knowledge of what went on 80 years ago shows me as a young Jewish man that I need to strengthen the memory of my Jewish people that disappeared from this earth. I've begun to do this by taking part and leading the Holocaust Education Awareness and Reflection Club at Barrett Keeper Academy. During this difficult year where survivors have felt isolated and alone, we've made it our priority to connect with these survivors in our community via Zoom, letters, and phone calls. As social media begins to become an outlet for anti-Semitism, we've combated dozens of anti-Semitic videos and tasteless Holocaust jokes. We've used this hate on social media as a chance to educate ignorant people about the Holocaust and the Jewish people's history. Most importantly, we have set out to teach the next crop of Jewish leaders how to deal with anti-Semitism and how to speak up against all hate against Jewish people and other minorities. I've strived to be a strong Jewish role model to my young, younger classmates so that as I move on from Barrick and into the adult world, I feel confident that they can lead as I did in making a brighter Jewish future. Thank you, Ilan. Eva, will you please? Yes, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm not a speaker. I can't do speeches like this. Uh, <laughs> but Just what, I, yourself. what I've learned through my long life and, and from the Holocaust is to go with the flow. Uh, the, the, be resilient, look for the silver lining. Everything that happens that is bad may have a silver lining. It may be difficult to find it, but it's there. And try not to fight the bad things that happen, but go with them and try to solve them and get through. It's not easy to be, to be Jewish, uh, especially in this world, but still be proud to be Jewish and but we, we, you require strength in this world. Be great about, above everything else, be grateful for the life you have, all you young people. Be grateful for living in a country where you are free, where you can express your Judaism still. Um, and uh, just thank, I thank God every day for my life and for my health and for my family and for being here today. Also respect other people like Gabriella said, she took the words out of my mouth. So that's, that's really all I have to say. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Eva. I'm gonna ask Jolie Held 
um, to Toledo to share some of her words. My grandma used to tell me to live my life passionately, to act with purpose, but to always respect those whose life experiences and opinions differed from mine, to hear the stories that I didn't want to listen to, the ones that made me uncomfortable. Survivors, your stories are not easy to hear. Your stories expose the darkness within humanity, the capability anybody has of inflicting harm onto another person. Yet, if it weren't for your courage, we would not be here today living lives full of potential and possibility, a Jewish future filled with hope. Your stories need to be heard. We must be aware of the fact that genocide can happen again. As the next generation of Jewish leaders, it remains up to us to tell the uncomfortable stories of our past, the stories that need to be told. Hearing of the atrocities that our brave survivors face, I ask what can we do better and how can we learn from the hostility and fear? Perhaps it is from the ugliness, the violence, and the hate that we can learn to empathize with one another, recognizing the need to question the status quo in order to see the practice of equality. Believe not that injustice will solve itself, but rather stand up and say, I will do whatever I can in my power to fix what needs fixing. Anti-Semitism is the oldest known form of hate, yet so many people remain ignorant on the issue. Seeing on social media the ease with, people, with which people can joke about the Holocaust and their defense that they have a Jewish relative or didn't know it was that bad exposes the level of misinformation surrounding our history. With this, we must commit to educating ourselves and those around us to combat hate and ignorance with knowledge. These uncomfortable conversations remain vital to ensure a healthy and hopeful Jewish future. No learning is off limits, no story too horrid to be told. Life is not a fantasy, but a reality. Dare to see the good and the bad, the light and the evil, act graciously and learn from the mistakes of the past. As my grandma would say, live with your eyes wide open in order to see the wholeness of the world around you. Our future lies in our hands. Lily, thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Raul Hartal. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. It is indeed an honor for me to join you on this uh, virtual Yom HaShoah ceremony event. A couple of years ago, I joined students from your school on the March of the Living, which brings together students and Holocaust survivors from all over the world, visiting Holocaust killing sites in Poland, and we also visited Auschwitz, the largest Nazi concentration camp during World War II, where millions, including children, were massacred. The march culminates is a visit at Yad Vashem in celebration of life in Israel, life of the Jewish people. I am a Holocaust survivor. I was born and hidden in Bersha Transnistria, a Nazi slave uh, extermination and concentration camp now in Western Ukraine. My parents and I were very lucky to survive an estimated 300 to 300,000 to half a million Jews were either killed or died of starvation and mass executions in Transnistria where I was born and hidden during the war. Children were born at all concentration camps including Auschwitz, and a few like myself were hidden and luckily survived, despite hunger, disease, and freezing cold weather. Tragically, during World War II, about one to one and a half million Jewish children like you or younger or older were killed or died of disease or hunger. To paraphrase Elie Wiesel, whom I had the privilege to know, and he used to call me his friend, over a million children massacred. I shall always see them, hounded, humiliated. They are hungry. There is no one to give them a crust of bread. They are afraid, and there is no one to reassure them. It is very hard to comprehend the magnitude of the tragedies suffered by Jewish people during World War II. 
the Holocaust happened once. It must not happen ever again. Unfortunately, anti-Semitism, the historical prelude to the Holocaust is spreading again, particularly on some college campuses in this country and other places under the umbrella, frequently under the umbrella of BDS. It cannot be ignored. It is said that the media by and large, by and large, ignores it or misrepresents it. Virulent anti-Semitism, the prelude to the Holocaust, adopted by many in Europe and ignored by others, was the prelude to the Holocaust. I should, it should never be ignored or forgotten. While we cannot change the past, we must prevent it from happening again. We should always remember and never give up, never give up. That is why it's so important to educate and share information about the past and the resurgent and persistent anti-Semitism and the Holocaust. I wish you to stay safe, wishing you all the best and success in your endeavor and remember, never give up. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Otel. I'm gonna ask Sarah Landy, a student at Milken, to share some words from her experience. When I was very young, I assumed that everyone's grandmother traveled with 16 ounces of seasoned cured beef salami wrapped in bright red packaging. It was always in her bag wherever we went. No matter how long or short the trip, oddly, it was never eaten. When I asked her about it, all she said was, you never know when we will face an emergency. I accepted this answer, but suspected there was more to the story. As I grew up, I began to understand that my grandparents and my great-grandparents had survived the Holocaust. Over many years, I asked them questions and slowly their story of fleeing Germany and Austria as children, the experience of my great-grandfather at Birkenau, and their lives growing up as refugees in New York became known to me. Their story became more detailed and more clear to me as I matured and they revealed more of their past. I came to realize that the salami that my grandmother carried was much more than an emergency stash of food. It was a symbol of her trauma. A trauma passed on to my father and me. It was a symbol of resistance, perseverance, and always being prepared for what might come. It was also an invitation to ask questions. My grandparents not only survived, but thrived in the US. They are both PhDs who raised three children steeped in Jewish ritual and tradition and have nine grandchildren. My grandparents are resilient people who face each day with optimism and hope. In these ways, and by sharing their story of survival, they have done their part to ensure the Jewish future. Now, it is my turn to build the Jewish future. In honor of my own family story and the stories of the survivors with us today, I promise to keep asking questions, listening and remembering and telling the stories to the next generation. Next year on my college campus, I promise to seek out Jewish experiences and be an active member of Hillel and the Jewish community there. I promise to make my decisions in line with the values of the covenant and continually renew it in my life. I promise to be an informed and engaged member of the Jewish community so that I can stand up against hate. I promise to remain a member of a synagogue. I will educate my future children in Jewish traditions and history. I promise to support Jewish organizations and give tzedakah. I promise to cherish a Jewish identity given to me by my family and my school. And I promise to safeguard the Jewish people by being aware that the everlasting lesson of the Holocaust is that our safety like our next meal can never be taken for granted because that is why my grandmother doesn't go anywhere without her salami. And although I won't be carrying the salami in my bag, I will carry the stories, the memories and the lessons of the Holocaust with me wherever I go. Thank you, Sarah. I wanna thank the six of you for the, uh, the blessings that you've brought to us. And before we take a minute of silence, I'm going to ask all of the students and anyone else who would like right now to put their own commitments, their own blessings, ways of honoring our survivors, building the Jewish future into the chat right now. 
and I'd appreciate it if each student would think about what you spoke about the hour before we had this ceremony and just put into the chat, um, as I say, a word of commitment to honoring our survivors and building the Jewish future. There's some really meaningful reflections coming into the chat. We hope you're all reading them as they come in. Um, if this feels hard for you, you are also welcome to put a word in the chat, a word that describes how you are feeling right now, a word that describes how you felt after hearing or while you were listening to a survivor yesterday a word about how you're feeling about the future of Judaism. Anything. And please take a minute to watch the comments, the beautiful reflections that are coming in. In a moment, I'm gonna ask everybody if they're able to rise. And I'm going to invite David Lenga, who is a survivor born in Lodz, Poland in 1927, who will lead us in the song, which I'll try and pronounce, um, Zog Nit Kemol, which is the partisan song, and also lead us in the Kaddish. Um, and I just wanted to say that uh, the partisan song, some of us may not have heard it in school, um, is often sung in memorial services for the Shoah. And David Lang is a survivor of the Loge ghetto in Auschwitz, and he and his father were the only survivors. So if I could ask everybody to please stand. It kadav, it kadash me rabba. Amen. Bal madi brach irutei, viam lich malchotei, v'chayachon uvimachon, v'chayei dekol bet Yisrael bagala, v'izman marik, kari v'im rumein. Yehei shme rabba mevorach, Olan Oman Ma Al Maya, Vit Parah, Vit Parash Tamah, Vit Par, Vit Roman, Vit Nasei, Vit Halal, Vit Halal, Vit Halal, Vit Shemay, Vit Kodeshu, Berechu, Lola Min Kol, Berechata, Shutush Berechata, Vetubar, 
חשוב את זה. השפתחתה וכאן אמרת, דאמירה מעלמה ואמרו אמן, יהי שמי רבו משמיא וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו אמן, עושה יעשה שלום, ואמרו, עושה שלום ואמרו מה, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו אמן. אמן. It is my privilege to sing to you the partisan song, which was written during the Holocaust. And it has as much meaning, it, it had so much meaning then, and it has much more meaning today. Zognit kemo az di geistem letzten weg, Kotsch im land bloene, verstellung ruhe teig, Weil kommen wird noch, Unser Reus gebente Schuh, es wird erpeugt und unser Trott mir seinen Du. Weil kommen wird noch, unser Reus gebente Schuh, es wird erpeugt und unser Trott mir seinen Du. Von grünen Palmen lang bis den weiten Lang von Schnee. Wir kommen um mit unser Pein, mit unser Weh. Und wie gefallen sie, sah Sprotz von unser Blut. Sprotzen wird dort unser Gewehr und unser Blut. Und wie gefallen sie ist, ein Sprotz von unser Blut. Sprotzen wird noch unser Gewehr und unser Mut. Die Morgen sind, wird bei Gulden uns dem Heim. Und der Nächten wird verschwinden mit dem Pein. Und ein Versummen wird die Sinn in dem Kajor. Wie ein Parol. So gein du slit von dor zu dor, und oi persommen wird die Sinn in dem Kajor, wie ein Parol, so gein du slit von dor zu dor. Geschrieben ist das Lied mit Blut und nicht mit Blei, das ist kein Liedl von ein Feugel auf der Frei, nur so dein Volk zwischen Falle der Gewand, das Lied gesingen mit einer Garnis in die Hand, drum so gnisch Kemel, aus der Geist im letzten Weg, Kotsch im Land bleiben, verstellen blaue Teig. Weil kommen wird noch unser Reus gebente Schuh, es wird da kommt, 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 unser Frott, wir seien ein Du. Thank you, David. I'm going to ask Eva to please sing the Hatikva. Remain standing. Lord Bala going to conclude you can sit down and I want to thank David and thank Ava and while I'm on the thanks just to take us back to the beginning of this journey that hard to believe was uh, two days ago um, that we we started yesterday and I just wanted to thank I want to thank Maya and Monice and Catherine and Jordana for bringing to us um, 
just for bringing the survivors into our midst. I want to thank the school leaders for bringing their students. And uh, I want to thank the survivors for accompanying us, um, for being our significant others, for being people who give us depth and also give us hope. And I hope we can give some of that back. And uh, I'm gonna conclude here and just, uh, just conclude in silence and people can sign off as they wish. Um, thank you, everybody. Shalom. Thank you, Rabbi VK, for letting me be part of um, this whole program. Let me lead in. Let me be spotlighted. It was great. Also, thank you, Ms. Newman. Thank you, Sophia, for being part of the program. And I'm on niece. But thank you, Sophia, for your, <laughs> for, your, for your manners. I greatly appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Thank you, love. Yeah, thank you. Are we excused? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you're done. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to make sure. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Ilan, also, you spoke beautifully. Thank you for sharing with us today. Oh, thank you. I actually wanted to ask, would it be possible to um, get Mr. Langa's information? Because my daddy was from Ludge, and he survived the ghetto there and Auschwitz.